What's up, Beardo? Shea Tree Surgeon here, up here at Bird's Black Widow with my man Gunner. What was your Instagram? Florida Ghoul. Florida Ghoul with my man Florida Ghoul over here getting the gold wing running for us. We were just uh, joking about how it uh, looks like an Autobot. It looks like a Transformer. But the only thing this thing is transforming into is like uh, a booth for four at an Olive Garden with unlimited breadsticks over here. Definitely not the coolest bike on the block, but for what'd you say the price was, Gunner? I had to put my camera down for a second because I needed to get the final price on this gold wing uh, because uh, Gunner just sold it to me and I really didn't believe him. Like I said, I always like to come up to Burt's and find the cheapest bike that they have. And he just called up and they said, for this Goldwing, uh, which is a GL 1500, now it does have 129,000 miles on it, but that sucker fired right up. For this Goldwing, 1300 bucks out the door. That ain't something you normally hear because you know when you get a dealer price, 1500 bucks, you got tax, tag, title, dealer fees. They said this bike, 1300 bucks out the door. For a running GL 1500, I don't care if it's got 100,000 miles on it. That is freaking out of control, dude. Let's see what this thing rides like. What I really love about it is this back here. It's, I love a gold one because of the story, and so many of them have stories. And you got Nikki and Todd back here. The wind beneath my wing. Not wings, the wing beneath my wing, as in gold wing, baby. We got the triple pea shooter exhaust back here. I love that because you look at this bike and you look at the those names on it and that pinstripe and you're like you know what somebody loved this motorcycle Nikki and Todd put a hundred thousand miles on this motorcycle and they loved every minute of it and for 1300 bucks you know what man you could get some you could get some life out of this trust me man these things will go well over a hundred thousand miles well it ain't perfect we got a missing mirror up here but that's an eBay purchase away it's got a couple of missing side panels I saw one of them back there they got that side panel but it's uh, missing those two I, I look for them in the side bags and they weren't in there but again it's an ebay purchase away or if i was spending 1300 bucks on this thing and i just wanted a, a thing i could ride the wheels off of a bike that i could take across the country for that cheap i wouldn't even bother replacing them feels like it's running fine to me baby i would say that the rear brake probably needs to be bled it doesn't feel very great but <laughs> baby, it's moving down the road all right for 1300 bucks out the door at a dealership 129,000 miles, you could do much worse than this pile right here. That's for damn sure. Always love that, man. When you go up to a Harley Davidson dealership, everyone thinks like, oh man, I couldn't even afford to walk in this place. And maybe that's true at other Harley Davidson dealerships, but it definitely ain't true at Burt's Black Widow and Burt's Barracuda. And I, you might be like, oh, you're just saying that because they, they donated the raffle bike for Forgotten Angels. No, I'm not. You can go back through any of my videos and see with your own eyes all the like sub $2,000 bikes that I've shown up there that some of the people who bought some of those bikes, I still talk to. The first one I ever did was a Kawasaki Voyager, and I forget if the guy flew down or somebody drove him down, but he came down, and let me tell you what, man, he actually rode that bike back. Actually, I wonder if that bike is still going, man. I'd really love to know that. 1300 bucks for this thing? Oh, oh. It's faster than the mail order glide, that's for sure, because it's got two working carburetors. Man, this thing runs freaking fine, dude. They're right up into overdrive. Damn, dude. Th that's what I love about Burt's. I know not every Harley Davidson dealership is like this. I always say that, but not every Harley Davidson dealership is like Burt's. Burt's is just the kind of place where, man, they, they just, they buy anything for trade-in. So when people want to trade in something like this on a Harley Davidson, yeah, they'll buy it from them. A lot of Harley Davidson dealerships won't even accept it, but they do. And then instead of trying to like get as the maximum amount of money out of it as possible, they usually just try to turn around, sell and get their money back. And that's what's happening with this one. Like Burt's isn't trying to sit there and go like, oh, we're going to make this huge profit on this, on this gold wing, on this hundred thousand mile old gold wing. They're, they're just going like, we literally just making our money back. We gave the guy, we're selling it to what we gave him for it and that's about it and i think that's pretty cool i think that's pretty neat and you know you don't see that at every single harley davidson dealership which is one of the reasons i really like doing business with birds man and i'll tell you don't think that you're getting a perfect motorcycle for thirteen hundred dollars it certainly isn't but i will tell you it's still a thirteen hundred dollar motorcycle I really got to fix the carbs on the mail order glide, man. It's so nice actually switching the throttle and having it jump up like that. This thing's pretty quick. I mean, compared to my Goldwing, anyway. Compared to my Goldwing. 
there you go, man. I, I love it. That's one of my favorite things to do. And it's, I just love it because I like to show people that motorcycling can be so freaking affordable if you just allow it to be, okay? Here's a $1,300 complete touring bike. Like you wanna go across the country, you wanna go on a crazy long trip, you wanna throw caution to the wind and just see what's over the horizon, baby. You wanna chase that sunset. You know what? You don't gotta do it on a $40,000 bike. You can do it for 1,300 bucks. Now, 1,300 bucks and uh, you know, I think it needs a new battery. Uh, I'd probably change the timing belts. But again, for 1,300, maybe not. Maybe for 1,300 bucks, you could just chance it. You could really just throw it to the wind and go like, you know what, screw it, man. If I freaking bust a timing belt and bend a valve out on the road, so what, man? <laughs> That's not the worst gamble in the world. The deals are out there, man. In this world of like prices going up and everything getting more expensive and just all these, all these people going like, man, you can't get a deal anymore inflation is wild and crazy but baby there you go what the inflation buster life is still affordable motorcycles are still affordable you can still get out there and you can still have an awesome time on a bike for not a lot of money man for 1300 bucks you're rolling 1300 bucks let's go look at the tires <sighs> the tires don't look new but they don't look that old either man i cannot believe that this is only 1300 bucks gunner that's why, dude, it's great. <laughs> I mean, it's really wild, man. The rear brake needs to be bled, which is common. Um, it needs a new battery. The tires look fine. It needs a new mirror. Literally for like a couple hundred bucks, you have like a perfectly fine running motorcycle. And it's perfectly fine running now. You can just use the front brake. Like, you don't have to use the rear brake. <laughs> I know, I love a gold one with a story, man. I wanna know, what's what's Nikki and Todd's story? What are they doing right now? They're probably on a Ultra Glide Classic right now is what happened. <laughs> That's what gold wings always get traded in on. Someone gets like a big old ultra glide or a trike or something. Cause they put a hundred thousand miles on this sucker. They were riders, that's for sure. Nikki and Todd knocked it out of the park with this guy. Well, leaving $1,300 gold wings behind, I'm back on my $1,500 gold wing, which now I feel like I overpaid for because I only got one working carb on mine. I only have one working carb on my mom. <laughs> yeah, but that's the right amount. Again, speaking of old crappy Hondas, let's get some parts for the giveaway silver wing. I shouldn't talk so much crap about the mail order glide. It's taking me how all over this country on just one carburetor. It's still it's still putting in work. All right, first things first. Let's stop at Square Deal Battery. I got to pick up a new battery for the Silver Wing up there because the one on it has ceased to be. If you guys didn't know about Square Deal Battery, it's a local company here. It's been here for uh, decades, literally. A local company here in Tampa that uh, they rebuild batteries here. This place rebuilds them sells them i think i think i paid like 30 bucks for the last silver wing battery <laughs> hey man you take it easy all right good dudes up here at square deal let me tell you man they just sold me a battery for 20 dollars. 20 dollar battery completely charged completely rebuilt by them and they didn't even charge me a core charge just because they go yeah you know what you just bring back that core whenever we won't call it we won't charge your core charge who says there ain't good deals left baby there's always a good deal out there you just got to know how to sniff it out and we got alan jackson if you're nasty playing way down yonder on the chattahoochee on the radio, let's rock and roll, baby. It's gonna be a good day. Oh, there he goes. It's all sound and fury. Well, I'll tell you where the deals ain't, and they ain't at literally any metric dealership. I swear to Bob, man, I love Hondas, but I have never been into a Honda dealership that wasn't an absolute fucking joke. I was just in the Discord going like, man, I wish there was a single metric dealership in Tampa that was like even a quarter as good as Burt's is. And everyone just goes like, you know what? Even asking a metric dealership to be a quarter as good as Burt's is, is asking a pretty tall order. Maybe it's different in your hometown, but I swear to God, dude, I've never been in into a metric dealership and not just been like, wow, this place is ridiculous. Out of every single part I tried to get for the Silver Wing, uh, brake pads, oil filter, oil filter O-rings, uh, dampening rod bolts, air filter, they had one single part, the oil filter, and they didn't even have the O-rings that went with it, which is ridiculous because I can literally go, I wanted to get it today from the dealership, but I can go on Amazon and have that stuff next day. And the places like that wondering why they're getting put out of business by Amazon, 
The difference is when I go to Ride Factory, when I go to Burt's, they got the parts right there. Uh, let's see if we have a little bit better luck at cycle gear. Oh, I see my man Marcus is here, Mr. Boy Racer on his Aprilia. I'm gonna park this performance machine right next to it, all right? Just two thoroughbreds, that Aprilia and this GO 1500 side by side, baby. Barely tell the difference between them. Okay, well me and Shelby up here at the shop and out of every single thing I went to get today, pretty much the only deal I got was square deal batteries. So those guys are pretty cool. Everyone else can suck it right now. But Shelby is pretty confident that if we're careful, we can get the damping rod bolts out of here so we won't need new ones of those. Uh, Cycle Gear has tires in stock, so that's not gonna be a problem. Should be ready to go today. Barring uh, me doing something absolutely ridiculous. I think Shelby probably could handle it if I wasn't here. But I mean, I could still, I could still mess something up. If I just left him alone, it would be fixed really well, but then there's no content, is there? <laughs> We're Laurel and Hardy over here, all right? <laughs> Shelby fixes them up and I break them down, baby. Let's rock and roll. Okay, well, I'm sure there's like a preferred place to start. It's not like we're doing a concourse level restoration here. There's probably a right right place to start. And uh, especially if we're both working on it at the same time. Not that I'm gonna be doing much. I'm gonna be doing minimal amount of work while Shelby's doing most of the important stuff to make sure it doesn't get messed up. But if you're in agreement, Shelby, I'm just gonna pull off the brake calipers yep. right away. And I know I do know how to rebuild those, so I'll start working on that. Start working on the front suspension, which I think is going to be a little more tricky. Still so air shocks. Does that make a difference? You just let the air out of them, then they're just shocks, right? Okay, cool. I was like freaked out. I was like, oh no, it's air shocks. What are we going to do? Shelby's like, nah, don't worry, dude. <laughs> do you usually suck the fluid out before you um, yep. before you pull them off? Mm -hmm. That's smart. You know what I usually do? Instead of pulling the fluid out, yeah, I just pull the lines off and let it drip everywhere. What well, your way seems better. <laughs> cleaner. Imagine that. Shelby knows better. Wild. Pretty typical stuff to, uh, especially with these old Honda bikes that spend some time outdoors that get on the master cylinder and the screws that hold that in are just absolutely roached. Freaking made out of hot butter anyway, and then people usually aren't careful with them, but if anybody can actually get them out without bringing out the drill, which is what I usually do, that's what I had to do to my Goldwing, it will be Shelby. They're pretty rough. Oh, man, see? Would you look at that? Your way seems easier than mine. Again, I don't know if it's just coincidence that two things in a row, the way you do it, are easier than the way I do it, but I, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's weird. I cut it once. <laughs> Absolutely bizarre. Hey, now I'm gonna take these off, or loosen these first. So I made the mistake last time when I rebuilt my Goldwing calipers is I took this whole thing off and then like, I was like, well, how do I loosen these now that the caliper's in my hand? <laughs> loosen everything first. Yeah, I was like, hmm, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> oh wow, glad these are getting rebuilt. That one was fucking just fell, fell off, man. These, these are probably C, so the reason I bought a caliper rebuild kit is you can look in there at those uh, uh, calipers, at those pistons in there, those look pretty grody. The front brakes were not performing well. You know, 40 some year old brakes are ever gonna blow your mind, but <laughs> well, maybe they should stop a little bit. It's like someone, had, someone described how to stop in a different language. Pins are coming out easy, man. Maybe these things aren't that bad. How are we looking up there, Shelby? A total pain in the ass or what? Yeah, uh -oh. very hard. Away. Of course, I'm over here going like, I'll, I'll rebuild this. I'm over here freaking like building, building freaking Duplo Lincoln logs over here while Shelby's doing the real work. <laughs> so things are normal. Basically everyone else in the shop is cussing my name because Shay is over there uh, cleaning up my mass of spare parts. <laughs> There's so many and enough, none of them make sense. <laughs> to me either, so don't feel bad. Careful when you're using air in these things because I will say, from experience, they kind of come out a little violently. Or in these case, not at all. No wonder these front brakes didn't work. Nope. Yep. There we go. Damn. There's one. <laughs> like I said, they come out a little violently. Yeah, that definitely needed to come out of there. Ooh, that smells bad. <laughs> you too bad smell good. Oh my gosh, nobody else does right now. Problem with getting one out with air. Now, getting the other one out is pretty ridiculously hard. This should work. He says with such confidence. The key is to always be confident. It makes life a lot more fun. That way when you inevitably fail like I do, it's just like really surprising and fun. Who doesn't like surprises? 
Hey, we both out now? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, normally you don't use a pair of vice or a pair of needle nose to get these out if you're saving them, but we're not. Oh, just going. We're just talking about how much we've done on the raffle since we announced that the Silver Wing is uh, is a raffle bike. If you buy a raffle ticket for the uh, Ford Tremor and then the Lowrider S, you can also win this one. Uh, and she, I go, I paid for it, you know, because I'm like, oh man, you can't ask people to do nice things for Forgotten Angels unless you're willing to donate something yourself. And Shelby's over here cussing at it, going like, listen up, bub, I'm paying for it too. <laughs> He's just paying for it in minutes. Off his life due to frustration. <laughs> everything on this bike, most of almost everything on it, besides the proprietary luggage and the engine, which is obviously proprietary, look at that thing. Um, everything off this bike is pretty much off another bike. So it's all stuff that Honda used all over the place, not just on this bike, which makes life a little easier, even though the Honda dealership still doesn't have anything. And like a hundred people share Honda or tag Honda official when I announced the giveaway and I'm like 100% of the proceeds go to charity helping you know underprivileged youths and blah blah blah. I was like Honda America how about a share? Right. I mean, there must have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tags like somebody saw that dude. You don't get tagged a hundred plus times and have hundreds and thousands of people messaging Honda USA can we please get a share for this motorcycle for this Honda Silverwing to help out some freaking foster kids without any homes can we please get some help and they're like nah we can't give you a break either. He sure was <laughs> turning over in his crate. <laughs> Seeing as this is one of the few jobs that I actually have some experience doing, should go easy, he says with such confidence. Okay, here in our rebuild kit, we have a couple of pistons, a new bleeder screw, a little bit of grease here. And these are new pieces, uh, new covers for all the sliders and stuff like that. And then of course, our new seals. There are two sizes, a small one and a large one. The small one goes up top, the large one goes on the bottom. When you're sticking them in there after you've got everything blown out so there's no residual uh, brake clean hanging out in there, you just use a little bit of brake fluid to lube them up. I don't know why, but I, I, that's what I was told to do, so I always do it. Oh, well, the, the grease inside these sliders actually looks pretty damn fresh. I hope over the last 40 years, somebody had these apart at some point. I mean, if not, it's happening now, but like, holy crap, dude. Okay, the bottom seal, all the ones I've done, always goes in pretty easy. Then it's that skinny top one that always gives me problems. But I had the same problem when I was putting together my Goldwing calipers with a kit from them, <clears throat> where the top one was just like, just seemed too big for the freaking hole. Maybe it's just my clumsy Bad American fingers. Too many french fries. Okay, after struggling for mere minutes, <laughs> mere minutes I struggled with this. I admitted defeat and Shelby came and did it in seconds. So, of course, he wasn't being a baby like me and he just used his bare hands instead of freaking wearing gloves. So, let's try this again. Well, that doesn't sound like a good sound. All right, well, Shelby saved me once again on the top one, but, uh, you know, this time it took him almost two minutes to get in there. So, I'm just saying, you're getting slow, bud. All right, this is reminding future me that even though I've snugged these bolts, remember to completely tighten them later. Oh, that moves so much better in there. So much better as in before, it didn't move at all. Just what you always want to see around your brake parts with very fine tolerances, a ball peen hammer that weighs 16 ounces. Got it in there. Definitely took me a little longer than Shelby. I just heard Shelby over there emptying the fork, making noises of disgust. Yikes. The living sludge, baby. Yeah, I don't. I think that has ceased to be fork oil, and now looks like something that could, uh, you know, bring about Jurassic Park, something from the Mesozoic era. <laughs> We're gonna stick that in an embryo, mix it with frog DNA, and have Velociraptors running around. <laughs> not, not ideal. We'll go ahead and call what was in there. So seeing Shelby over here with us now, I remember this being an issue on my Goldwing forks too, and these are basically the same forks on the old Goldwings. Um, there's these weird shows, and he did finally get it. Is that the way? The, it's like the, the bottom body, the slider is like so small and so close to the tube that getting a decent pair of snap ring pliers past the slider in there to pull the snap ring out is, it took me a few hours. Shelby just took a few minutes, which for him is hard. <laughs> Oh, there we go, baby. 
It's really weird nobody sells a kit for it, but nobody does, man. What's really odd, again, that nobody sells a kit for these things is that these Showa fork tubes were on like every single freaking Honda ever. Yeah. These same ones, and nobody sells a rebuild kit for it that includes uh, bushings. When I rebuilt the Goldwing, I bought the bushings each individual piece from Honda that I had to wait about two weeks for him to get here. Is this even the bad one? No, this isn't even the bad one. Dude, that's the good side. Uh <laughs> that does not look pleasant. When I rode it over here, literally every, I could ride over a dime and it would just be like, punk, and like hit the, hit the bump stops. We can only get one tire off at a time here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tire up to cycle gear now and get a new tire on it while Shelby's over here messing with the suspension and also see if they have a seal driver kit here because these 35 millimeter forks that came on all these Hondas, my usual handy dandy trusty piece of PVC pipe doesn't quite fit in the slider on these things. Uh, incredibly unsurprisingly, everyone was super, super productive while I was gone. Crazy how that works, right? <laughs> I'm here and uh, I'm just getting in the way and nothing's happening. I leave, all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, it's like magic. Now everything's almost done. The fork's assembled, like the front end's ready to go back on. Dang, it's almost like I'm the problem, but not, I mean, almost like that, but there's no way, there's no way. So I just go to freaking open this up to put this tail section on. My man Ezra, who sold me the original bike and Tango 165 from California got together and they sent all this stuff down here. So Tango 165, packaged it all up, wrapped it all up, sent it down here, and I just opened this uh, <laughs> tail section and there was a $20 bill inside that says hashtag Shade Tree Army on it. And since Shelby is doing the vast majority of the work, it's 100% going to Shelby. Oh, yeah. that, that is that is Shelby. That's expert money right there. I think Tango knew, like, hey, <laughs> you're gonna need some help on here. Here's a little help, bud. It almost seems like there's like a lever that takes it on or something. It's not definitely not bolted on. There's like got to be some sort of mechanism somewhere. And I can almost in my head remember the dude who sold me the other one telling me how to do it, and I just wasn't paying attention. What I do is pop both of them up until you hear this click. So it's the helmet holder, Shelby, which sucks because I'm pretty sure I left the key at home. God, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Five o'clock too. Uh, well, nothing like a nice little ride in the middle of rush hour traffic to break up your day. My absolute favorite. <laughs> uh, I got no one to blame but me though, because the reason I'm having to take a nice little ride here in rush hour traffic is because uh, old genius shade tree surgeon, super genius card carrying member of Mensa over here. Once again, forgot the key at the house. So right at five o'clock when we get ready to use the key to put the rear section on, I go, well, let me just go ahead and fight traffic and grab that real quick because I'm a moron. Guess what? Uh, life is hard. It's harder when you're stupid. All right, one rush hour traffic fight later. I have a key. Let's see if this is easy as everyone made it seem online. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it is. Now we're cooking with fire. All right. Cool. We now have a top. It looks like a top top box, doesn't it? Dig, low profile, baby. Matches perfectly. And just like that, this thing's starting to look like a motorcycle again, Shelby. Got some fresh new rubber. The brakes are rebuilt, ready to get slapped back on. Forks are rebuilt, full of oil. Got some pressure in them. Who said we couldn't do this in one day? So I think a bunch of people said I couldn't do it in one day. I don't think anybody said you couldn't do it in one day. <laughs> They're probably right. But here we are. 1-800-ASK-SHELBY. Coming soon. Yeah. The plastic maggot they called this. <laughs> I guess just because it was just so butt ugly or something. One of those, it's so ugly, it's beautiful, except it's so ugly, it's beautiful, and then they made it even uglier. It's so ugly, it's ugly. Theoretically, even I should be able to figure out how to take the rear wheel off, you would think. Probably. Don't forget that probably. Though. That pro it's an important probably, Shelby. That was pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, kind of an important one there, huh? Believe it or not, I'm sure everybody believes it. For the longest time, I had no idea why there was a hole there. <laughs> just like, I was like, what the hell? What's in the tarnation is that for? <laughs> oh my, oh, okay. It actually makes a, uh, makes a lot of sense. 
Oh, there she goes. Got the new rear rubber mounted over here. Shelby's been bleeding the brakes while I was gone getting that done up. Time to grease these splines. And funny enough, I, I actually have the right thing for this. So like, weird enough, I do have the Honda M77 assembly paste that, the, that this requires. And that is called for in every Honda service manual I've ever looked at, even though I've never looked at this one, to whenever you change a tire, you better grease those splines. Because if you don't, you'll get clicking in the rear end and start to tear it up. Ask me how I know. At the risk of triggering anybody, cover your sensitive ears, trigger ward warning, <laughs> we will apply the M77 paste liberally. As Kyle would say, let's go ahead and put this one at three veins. How many dick pounds for this one, Shelby? And we got a rear tire again, boys. Not bad. You might not have them front master because you know you start taking shit apart sometimes with old bikes like this, you start taking stuff apart and just exposing it to the elements and trying to mess with it is enough to let it give up the last ghost it had. Luckily those things are pretty easily replaceable. I'm sure I could have a new one here. Freaking Bezos, buddy Bezos over there. I could probably have a new one here next day. So we couldn't get the brakes bled and Shelby goes, uh, well, let me go ahead and you know take that apart. And uh, he's just looking in there and I'm like, man, that's fucking just absolutely horrible. And he goes, it is absolutely not the worst I've seen. <laughs> Well, no wonder they didn't work. I'm sitting up there banging on it, trying to get bubbles out of it like a freaking chimpanzee. Meanwhile, inside there, it just looks like a science experiment. Thanks for going the extra mile, dude. That's the kind of can-do attitude you can expect with 1-800-CALL-SHOWBY. <laughs> Coming, spring 2022. You can call 1-800-ASK-GARY, but it ain't gonna help you fix your hole. Oh, well, hey, you know what? Just like it. It literally exhausted every single option available to us right now. Okay, slight snag, but through process of elimination, trying to bleed this, Shelby pulled it apart, still couldn't get any fluid through it, so we took all this off and started blowing air through that connector, through these things right here, and found out that uh, actually these lines, after being exposed to air and cleaner and whatever else we put in them, have ceased to be. These are now internally collapsed. And I learned something today, Shelby says, you're supposed to replace your brake lines about every four years anyway. Yep. <laughs> Since this is a 1982, pretty sure those are from 1982. So I'm gonna go down to Amazon rubber and hose tomorrow. And uh, again, the whole idea, I wanted to get this done in one day. I wanted to be like, one day job. It's off the lift in one day, but that's okay, man. Because the real idea is that this is safe and we're literally one piece away from this being off the way. I think it's about beer 30 at this point. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's in the next day and it is uh, on my gold wing that I ride away with a heart filled heavy with defeat. I guess it's not that much of a defeat. I mean, it's not ridiculous for you have to go out and get the next, next day and get parts or something like that. That happens to everybody. But I was really, really trying just to prove a point because everybody likes to talk so much smack about how long it takes me to fix bikes, which I'm a lot of times just like, come on, man. I, I do. I got a job and working on bikes is not my job. I have a job that I do other stuff at, which serve drinks and run a bar and order various beers when they run out and sometimes have to throw people out. Like I, ha I have a job. <laughs> I don't get to work on bikes every single day when I wake up. Right. Even though I do have a job, and sometimes I only go to Brapshar Garage, you know, sometimes I only go there once a month, you know? It's not like I'm I'm there every day. It still gets to me sometimes when someone's, you read the comments down below, and it'll get to me sometimes when people are like, I can't believe how long this is taking you. You're never going to finish anything and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy mackerel, man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think I suck, but it is what it is, man. Um, I, I I don't really care that much. I but I did. I wanted to get this damn. Uh, CX500, the GL500. I wanted to get it done in one day just to kind of stick it in, stick it in some of those people's eyes and be like, hey man, by the way, if I just put, sit down and sit down with me and Shelby, we can get this done in one day. But whatever, the brake lines were collapsed. It is a giveaway bike. Someone's going to win that bike for $25. Uh, those GL500s, the silver wings, they're solid as a freaking rock, man. Uh, I think someone's going to be winning a really amazing motorcycle. It's a, yeah, it's only 500cc motorcycle, but I rode one across the country. So if I rode it across the country, by the time I'm done with this one, it's actually going to be in better shape than my 
personal silver wing. Like I said before, I bought that motorcycle with my own money. All the parts that are going on it, I'm paying for with my own money. And of course, you know, one of the reasons I'm able to do this, I'm not rich, is because I have Patreons who support the channel. And we have a Discord, we talk every day, and I talk with these guys. And, you know, we just talked about like, hey, let's, as a collective, let's do something for Forgotten Angels because I'm asking everybody to donate 25 bucks a raffle to help out these underprivileged kids, these kids who uh, have aged out of foster care and are made homeless. And I'm asking everybody else to help them by buying a raffle ticket. And it's 25 bucks for a raffle ticket. And you could win a Lowrider S with a 131 and a Ford Ranger Tremor. And if you buy a raffle, We'll take it before March 1st, before Tuesday, March 1st. You're also entered to win a 1982 Silver Wing that I bought and I'm currently making in pretty much in tip top condition. You know, maybe not appearance wise, it won't be perfect, but it's a Silver Wing, baby. They were they were pretty ugly right off the showroom floor. I'm you're never gonna make that bike look pretty. So appearance, it don't really matter. Mechanically, that thing is gonna be ready to ride across the world. And I wanted to do that, and I wanted to pay for everything and pay for all the parts because, as I said, if I'm asking everybody else to support these kids, uh, then I have to also be willing to do it myself. And if I'm not willing to do it, I just I don't know, man. It just that don't sit right with me, I, and I don't know about everybody else. And I'm sure people will be like, "Oh, you talking about it? That's enough." But I mean, all I'm doing is talking about it, man. I t I talk all day long. I can talk about anything. So for me, talking about it, uh, talk is cheap. You got to put your money where your mouth is, and that's why we're building this silver wing, and that's why we're giving it away. Ah, oh, well, as the old folks say, "C'est la vie." It didn't get finished, and that's all right because. It, it just has to, because it has to be because it didn't get finished but it's gonna get finished on monday just gotta make a quick stop to uh another local business amazon and no not old buddy bezos is amazon always support local baby amazon rubber and hose this place has gotten me out of a jam many many times uh this place they make hydraulic hoses and fittings and stuff like that and as they say no order too small they do uh big old construction equipment and they also make brake lines for my little bitty 500 cc honda silver wing and just like that we have brand new brake lines for the honda silver wing for third ferguson and <laughs> they make them while you wait man you know that you can't always do that but if they ain't busy they'll make them while you're standing there as i always say this is why you support local business man because <laughs> look at that came up here got a made while i stood there brake lines how long would you be sitting there waiting for ups to show up with your brake lines if you didn't support a small local business like this uh, amazon hose has made brake lines for a lot of motorcycles that i own that's for damn sure the really funny part is is as of right now the bike still hasn't been like i put it on the lift before we started working on it but the bike still hasn't been consecutively worked on for more than 24 hours. It's still because me and Shelby were working on it yesterday. It's still less than 24 hours. If I didn't have to go to my real job right now, I could literally go ride to Brapstar Garage, throw those brake lines on, and still have it done in under 24 hours. Have it running and riding and restored, you know, not, uh, not uh, stored appearance-wise, but have it ready, completely mechanically sound, new tires, new brake lines, rebuilt calipers, the whole deal, rebuilt front forks, ready to rock and roll in less than 24 hours. But as I said, and I say this to you guys all the time, although I think that some people in the comment section tend to forget it, like working on bikes and making YouTube videos is what I do for fun. I have fun doing this. And I'm very fortunate that w the things I do to have fun now have real world uh, uh, actions that help out people. So it's like, yeah, I make these YouTube videos videos for fun. I fix up these old crappy Hondas for fun and you try to ride them very long distances because I find it exciting and exhilarating and I like people to see it and go like, hey, I can also do that for not a lot of money. In fact, you can do this one for $25. But now it has real world actions where I'm helping out Forgotten Angels by building this bike, by putting this bike together, by and Bert's Harley Davidson by donating the Lowrider S and Harley Davidson themselves, the motor company. You know, when was the last time Triumph stepped up to do anything? I was like, where's the Triumph? I'm like, man, Triumph can suck my left hind tit, all right? They ain't no, they, I mean, we're doing good things down here, and I've reached out to Triumph so many times, even when we were giving away a Triumph, and they haven't done crapola. You know who stepped up to the plate? Burt's Barracuda and Burt's Black Widow. You know who else stepped up to the plate? Harley Davidson themselves. Harley Davidson, the motor company, donated a 131 to Forgotten Angels, so we could put it in the bike. I mean, 
guys, we're, everybody's coming together here. And I, like I said, I can't ask any of you, and I fucking certainly don't feel good to ask the motor company or anybody like that, uh, any big company to help me out either. It doesn't feel good to ask them unless I'm also willing to do something myself. You know, you got to lead by example. And if I'm going to ask Harley Davidson or Triumph or Burt's Barracuda to do something to donate big money items, items worth tens of thousands of dollars to help out Forgotten Angels, if I'm not willing to pony up both my time and a few bucks to fix up this bike and also donate it, then I'm just a damn hypocrite, aren't I? All the links will be down below if you would like to purchase a raffle ticket. We're giving away a bunch of other cool stuff as well a vest from Rebel Reaper, we're gonna give away a helmet from Simpson, and a, I got a bunch of other stuff that we're doing on a live stream on Tuesday, March 1st. That's when we're gonna pull the winner for the Silver Wing. Uh, we're gonna pull the winner for all that other stuff, and man, I, again, I, I, I'm just in a mood today, man. I'm just, I'm just annoyed today. I try not to let myself get annoyed, but I am just kind of annoyed today. Another thing is, so, because apparently I need to spell everything out for all the freaking, all the, the moral police down there, or the raffle police. I get these people going like, you're you're twisted. You're you're a bad. I can't believe you're doing this. Did you know that this raffle and you're giving away this? And they just like I'm like, man, you really are you out there really trying to poke holes in a ship that's floating with that's carrying a bunch of kids that have been made homeless? Like we're out here trying to help people, and you're out there trying to be like, well, I don't know about this and this and this, and you're in trouble. I'm gonna call the cops. I'm like, holy crap, dude. What kind of asshole do you have to be to to, to that's where your mind goes? Is like I you're trying to screw people over. I don't take a dime from this. I don't take one single penny from the raffle. I take nothing. In fact, it costs me money. I'm spending my own personal money to, do, to build bikes and to do stuff to donate to the raffle. And I guess when someone just gets on my case and is like, man, you're just trying to screw people over and you're, you're trying to get one over on people. <laughs> I try not to lose my temper over stuff, but that one really gets me going. How exactly am I gaining? How exactly am I trying to screw people over and make it unfair? First off, um, lawyers donated their time who donate time to Forgotten Angels. They donated their time to make sure that the raffle is good. So I'm not worried about it anyway. And for someone to just to be like with no evidence or no nothing at all, be like, oh, this isn't right. This isn't the way it should work and start leaving these big, long paragraphs, long comments down in the comment section. I'm just like, man, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, holy moly, dude. What, like, what kind of person do you think I am? But you've never met me. You don't know me. You're just making up, you have this random idea that somehow this raffle is screwing people over and I'm somehow trying to get a leg up on everybody and 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 just kind of swindle people out of their money. Like you don't even know me, dude. And that wouldn't be so bad if I didn't lead a very open and public life. Like I work at the Dirty Shame. People come there and see me all the time. Forgotten Angels is a place you can Google. You can just go there and say hello to Dave and Cindy. The camp out is open to everybody. Like I'm not a hard person to find. So if you're gonna make moral judgments on me and what we're doing with it, with helping out these kids and raising money for them, you, you know what? Before you leave a four paragraph long moral judgment on who you think I am and how we're doing the raffle, why don't you show up and meet me in person, motherfucker? Before you go down here and be an internet tough guy and wanna leave these long ass comments talking about who I am and why I do things. Dude, I ain't hard to find. You wanna say stuff like that? You come say it to my face, man. I'm tired of reading this crap in the comments, dude. Goddamn keyboard warriors. Drives me nuts, man. And I know it shouldn't. I'm just I'm just on a sick one today. I know it shouldn't make me mad. I shouldn't get upset about it, but hey, guess what? <laughs> Sometimes I get riled up, baby. It is what it is. Anyway, against the, again, on the other thing that gets me riled up is people saying I can't finish a bike. I never finish a bike. I shouldn't be working on bikes. I'm like, dude, give me a break, man. I, I like to make a lot of jokes about myself, about my skill level, and I certainly don't know everything, but I know more than some. Uh, I don't always know what I'm doing, but I also know when I'm in over my head and when to call someone who's an expert like Shelby so there you go man and again this bike would have been done it would have been on the road <laughs> my plan was actually if we had finished it last night I was literally gonna hop on it that night and ride ride down and try to meet up doodle because she's on her uh, her road trip but uh, it didn't work out uh, I'm still gonna try to take it on a road trip here in a couple days until that happens I got to go to work because I still have to pay my electric bill <laughs> That still comes every month, whether I want it to or not. I don't care how many subscribers you have, you still have to pay your electric bill. <laughs> anyway, 
Links down below for the raffle. Please buy a ticket. It goes to Amazing Cause. Does not hit any branches on the way down. 100% of that money, 100% of your $25 goes to benefit these kids who have aged out of the foster care system to build them tiny homes, to help them get the start they've never gotten in life. they has been screwed over by the system, and it goes to help Dave and Cindy help them. And nobody takes a freaking dollar from it, okay? <laughs> this is You can feel good about this one, I promise. I hope to see you guys at the camp out. It's at the Forgotten Angels property the weekend of March 19th. Please come you don't have to bring anything but your body free food free beer all weekend you don't have to spend a dime just come on down and party with us until next time y'all keep it weird <laughs>